Welcome to sunny San Clemente, Southern California, USA. I'm exploring this area and it's full of turbidites. First of all, what is a turbidite? Turbidite, say it, turbidite. What is that? It's a sedimentary rock, and these ones specifically were laid down in a marine environment. I'd like to see if I can illustrate it here for you. So, at the coast, right, you have rivers and creeks that empty out into the ocean. And within that, you have a ton of sediment, right? You got sands, you got clays, you got muds, silts. They're all going out there, and they're accumulating on the ocean floor. And we tend to forget about them since we can't really see them out there. So let's, let's illustrate this. Let's say this is the ocean floor, right? Here's the land, here's the sediment that keeps getting washed and it's accumulating. Now, what can happen is this soft sediment right here can destabilize and you have these underwater landslides that get triggered. They're called turbidity currents, hence the name turbidite. So, you have all this material that's in a kind of a landslide. It's going down this channel and it just churns up in the water. The water is just all murky. So what can happen once it's settled out, the larger clasts or, or pebbles, they're heaviest, right? So they're going to fall out of suspension first. Then the coarse sand will come out. Then the medium fine sand will come out of suspension and deposit. And then the muds and the silts that are in suspension for the longest will take forever, but they come down and they rest. So once everything's done, you have this sequence of different strata. That sequence is called a turbidite. And we got tons of them here. Again, laid down in a marine environment. Let's go and take a closer look. Hold on just a second. You just said that these are deposited in a marine environment, like under the ocean. So how is it that we can see them on land now? That's the exciting thing about geology. The land and the oceans, they're always changing. Nothing stays the same. This used to be the bottom of the ocean. This whole land got uplifted or the ocean went down. Probably a little bit of both. And what's really cool is this got uplifted and then you had a creek come through here that cut through the turbidites. It's kind of real similar to a wedding cake. You don't know what type of wedding cake it is, right? It's got all the frosting, but then you take that knife and you cut it you cut that slice out, now you can see the side layers, right? Now you know that it's going to be disgusting. You know what's not disgusting? These turbidites! Let's take a closer look. Let's go ahead and get up close and personal with a turbidite. Okay, so remember, in a turbidity current, the heavier things are going to fall out of the solution first, such as coarse grain sand. Look at how coarse the sand is at the bottom. So this is the bottom edge of one of those turbidity currents, or this is the bottom edge of a turbidite sequence. Now remember, the coarse stuff falls out of solution first, followed by finer stuff. Do we see that here, sir? Look at how coarse. Oh my word, look at the sand is finer and finer. Oh, we're getting lamination. Finer, 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 all the way to muds and silts right there. So that section from the top right there all the way down to here is a turbidite. This catalogs the history of an underwater landslide. How about that? Oh, uh, I did mention that there's turbidites out here, not turbidite, turbidites, plural, right? So let's look below that turbidite we just looked at and we can see the top of another one. All right, check it. Okay. So there's the coarse sand, and this is the silts and the muds of another turbidite sequence. You guys thought I was touching up my makeup. How dare you? It just kind of gets rid of a little weathering layer, kind of pops the colors. Look at that. So again, top layer of a turbidite, and that was it. That was the bottom of the ocean at one point. And then this guy, another landslide came through, whoosh, right? Ooh, look at this cool feature. Woo, look at them curves though. What is going on here? All right, let's take a closer look. Let's check it out, okay. All right, uh, so this is fine sediment. This is the top layers of a turbidite, and this would be the bottom layers of another turbidite because I can see how coarse the sand is. So what happened here? 
Well, imagine this was the top layer of a turbidite. So this was the bottom of the ocean at one point. And then this monstrosity of a turbidity current came down and deposited all this sediment on top of this. And these fine sediments at the bottom of the ocean were just like, <laughs> you know, under the extreme weight of all the sediment above it. So what can happen is you get these load casts that dig into these layers. And as these get pushed down, then you create like a flame structure that goes up over here too. It gets pushed down and pushed up real similar to like cookie dough and you put your hands in the cookie dough and you bah, you push down your fingers are going to create a load cast and then in between your fingers it's going to create this flame structure really cool sedimentary structure how these two turbidites interacted in the past here's another interesting feature you got a top sequence of a turbidite here the bottom sequence of one here and look at these features could these possibly be bioturbations of uh, organisms burrowing in the then seafloor, right? This used to be the bottom of the ocean right here. Maybe they had little burrows going on, and then this turbidity current came and covered and filled it all in. Those might be bioturbations. Don't know for sure. Here's another one. So you can get really cool structural features in between turbidites or where they are interacting. Uh, let me give you an example. Check this out. So we have the upper portion of a turbidite. See the fine layers here, silts and the muds. And here's the bottom layer of another one, the coarse sand. And look at the boundary between them. Do you see that? They're scours. So this turbidite or turbidity current, when it came through, actually scoured into this turbidite, right? Now check this out. Ooh, what do we got here? Okay, so imagine these turbidity currents are violent, right? So they're coming down. So they're not just burying other turbidites, they're scouring and cutting into them. And if they're violent enough, they can actually rip up pieces of this and get it included within its own turbidite. So these are called rip up clasts. They are bits of the top sequence of another turbidite that have been included in the bottom sequence of the uh, turbidite that was above it. Rip up clasts. Fine grain. See that? You can even see the bedding planes still there. You see that? So that piece used to be part of this. But when that violent turbidity current came through, it ripped up those pieces and then they got entombed within that turbidite. That's really cool. Rip up clasts. Guys, I found another structure. I'm not gonna act like I know what's going on here, but I'd like to share it with you. Check this out. Okay, so we got the coarse grain sand right here. So that's the lower section of this upper turbidite sitting on top of the fine grain upper section of this turbidite down below. We have some load casting scours and some flame structures, right? We've seen that, but uh, hello, sir, w what are these? These look like plastic dikes that are cutting through the upper section of this turbidite. So what happened here? Was it the ferocity and weight of this turbidite that came, or turbidity current that came in smashed this, cracked it, and injected its coarse sand within the crack? It kind of looks the same. Or was it the weight and this sand down below was squeezed up? Hmm. I don't know, sir. It's cool either way. I'm gonna go ahead and call those classic dikes. Mark that on the bingo card. Man, really cool laminations on the upper section of this turbidite, huh? Look at these little flame structures. Very cool. Hey guys, something else caught my eye when I was, when I was walking away here. Um, check out these, and I'm gonna butcher this name, Lisa Gang Rings. You see that right there? And there's ones over there. Okay, so those are created after all this sediment has been deposited. And when groundwater is moving through these layers, uh, these uh, rings form. I don't think they quite understand exactly how that works. However, I just thought it interesting that they're directly below the clastic dike. And I thought, well, look at this. So you got 
sandstone, which is permeable. Groundwater can easily flow through the sand. It has a tougher time getting through this uh, siltstone and muds, right? So the water can't flow, can't flow, can't flow. Oh, classic dike, little bridge, right? And look at where the Lisa Gang rings propagated directly below the classic dike there and directly below the classic dike there. Now, isn't that interesting? Hey guys, I found some more sedimentary structures of uh, two turbidites interacting right here. Okay, so let's get our bearings again. Fine layers. This is going to be the top section of a turbidite. This is coarse sandstone, so this is going to be the bottom section of another one. So again, this one was just chilling here. Then this tur turbidity current came through and put so much weight, created this load cast, which caused this to squeeze up. But look at how they flamed this way. See that? They're called flames because they kind of look like flames. But what's really cool about these structures is it indicates which direction the turbidity current was going. So as this gets oozed up, which way is the current going? Ooh, okay, so it's going that way. And I read that the paleo currents here were going northwest. So this confirms that direction. Flame structures. Well, thanks for joining me as we looked at turbidites of San Clemente, California, USA. If there's one lesson that geology teaches us is that the earth is always changing. Those layers right there, that used to be at the bottom of an ocean. And just think about the many layers that are being laid down as we speak out there in the Pacific. Maybe someday those turbidites will be exposed at the surface. We can explore those. Thanks for watching.